Chad Walsh, the junkyard dog. <laughs> All right, so tonight, Wallace comes out and he like clubs you with an underhook. What even happened in the first one second of the match today? Uh, I don't even know. I think we just we got after it right away, and I like it like that. Um, he came at me real hard, and I tried to throw him, and we went out of bounds, and I was like, all right, I woke up. I'm ready to go. Not used to starting a match at 165, but I'm glad he, he came out swinging. How many times have you ever done that, like start at 57 or 65? How, how, is that your first time ever? Uh, I think I told Hansie before the match the, the first time I did it, I lost. So I was like, I got to change that stat. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I looked at the coaches' rankings. They got you fourth. You're eternally the guy everybody sleeps on. I'm sure you like that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah? You so, so So they put you ahead of Massa. Did that surprise you at all? To be honest, I, don't, I haven't even looked at him too much. Um, I know Massa's lost once or twice this year, so I guess that might have something to do with it. But, uh, you know, just wherever I end up, it's just hopefully I get a good seed. Hopefully it looks good when I get there for nationals. But, I, you know, I'll be ready to wrestle whatever guy I get. How do you feel? You know, everybody knows you're dangerous, but you can wrestle solid too. That's the other crazy thing about you. You can you can actually go from not kitchen sink to yeah. solid wrestling. I've seen you do it. Yeah. You know, I've seen some of these matches where, you know, you see different looks from you. Is there is that, is that planned or is that just what the guy throws at you? Like tonight, not, tonight the guy wanted to go up a body. He's yeah. Digging hooks, wading into you. Right. So you're like, all right, let's do it. You hit a nasty throw yeah. on the edge of the mat. Out of bounds. Uh, that yeah. was for you, yeah. I yeah. know you were right there. Uh, so you I got me. I, it's good. We'll put it in the highlight. <laughs> but yeah. is that how you game plan for this? I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. You've always thrown the kitchen sink, but you can also wrestle conservatively and wrestle to win. Right. right. So how do you game plan it? Is it guy to guy or is it just whatever happens, happens? You know, it, it kind of is just um, I kind of interact with the moment. You know, it's – it. Uh, it's kind of hard sometimes because I get into so many crazy situations, but I feel like whenever I get into wrestling matches like that, I, I have a better chance. So I like being in those scraps. And I've told you that before. It's like, you know, if it's two to two, that's fine. If it's zero, zero, it's a little weird for me because I'm not used to it, but I'm fine with that too. And I think that's something that I've had to work on a lot in college wrestling was to, to really get solid in a lot of those positions so that I can win matches if it does come down to one takedown at the end, or I can win them 15 to 14. If you get in a situation where you are the four or five seed, and whoever they whoever's up at the one seed, does it matter to you what side of the bracket you're in? If it's the IMR side or the Vincenzo Joseph side, does it matter to you at all? No, I mean I'm gonna have to beat those guys, and I've been in great matches with them before, and I think it was a couple little things where maybe it, it was a little bit too much trying to throw the kitchen sink at them or trying things that aren't too high percentage, and uh, I think that's just my plan going into nationals is to have moves that I'm gonna be able to score on on these guys with and just trusting that stuff a little more than I ever have. And I think um, a little bit of fine tuning with that stuff is, it doesn't matter where I'm gonna end up in the bracket. I think that I'll be able to use that stuff and trust in that stuff. You'll be coming back to Cleveland. You know, the EWL will be in um, Edinburgh and then you guys will make your way back to Cleveland. Um, does it matter what city it's into? You know, it was in Philadelphia when you were in high school, right? Yeah. yeah. Kind of like not too far from home. I'm sure you went to that. Oh, Actually, awesome. that's where yeah. Kilgore won. Yeah, that's where Kilgore your, your won. Your coach, you know, now Kilgore won. And, you know, does it matter where the NCAA tournament is? Could it be in Antarctica? Does it matter to you? No, I could go anywhere, really. It would be nice in Philly because I'm only 10 minutes from there. But, I mean, I would love to wrestle any city. I could go south. I could go north. I could wrestle in Canada. I don't care. Like, you know, just really it's the preparation for our team. And for me, that's always kind of just had me ready. You know, I, I just believe in myself. And I, I work hard so that I can know I can go into these matches and wrestle the number one guy in the country, wrestle whoever it is it takes for me to get there and be confident. So, no, it doesn't really matter too much. I, I'm accustomed to wrestling, and, you know, New York was really cool. That was close to home. And Cleveland's, like, kind of a, you know, intermediate kind of place between St. Louis and home. So uh, a little bit closer, I'm ready to rock there. You're in a weird spot of – not a weird spot, but a transitional spot in Ryder wrestling history. You know, Gary Taylor, one of the all-time greatest coaches, third winningest coach, dual meet coach in the history of the NCAA, yep. over 400 dual wins. The guy knows a lot about wrestling. You guys sent him out with a bang last year. It was a pretty special NCAA tournament for him. You go to the Hangi era. Has anything changed? What's this transition been like for you? You know, you're you're potentially going to be the first three-time All-American rider history, trying to be their first NCAA champ, right? So you're trying to make career history. You know, what's changed from Taylor to Hangi? Yeah, it's kind of a difficult question because – uh, I think Coach Angie kind of had run of the mill even the last couple of years just so that Taylor could kind of see him into the into the uh, position a little easier. 
But, um, you know, there's a couple little quirks that you notice and just things. It's just nice to see Hansie really step into the role and he's just, you know, he's ready for it in every sense of the in every sense of that word. I mean, just ready for whatever, you know, the traveling. Like in Florida, our flight got canceled and, you know, he found a way to get us home. He just, he's that kind of guy that can make stuff work. So I'm not going to say it's too much different, but it means the same to me to be able to end coach Taylor with a great career and to start coach Angie with a great career. Both those things, I mean, to be in this transitionary era, I mean, for BJ, for me, for a couple of the other seniors, I think it's just a great opportunity for us to just step up and just set him up for however long his career is going to be. It might not, it might not be 39 years, but I want him to be ready and just to have a national champ, more All-Americans, just really get him started and just really have him hit the ground running with this program. Ask BJ, you know, you guys are the same age, you fifth-year seniors. Is it set in yet that this is over in two months? It's all done. This is all set and done. It's in the record books. This is over. It's either going to go train, coach, go get a real job, maybe travel the world. I don't know what you're going to do, but has it sunk in yet that in two months this is all gone? I try not to let it, you know. It's just trying to trying to work hard every day and trying to live it up as much as I can with this team, you know. I think it's uh, it's been the greatest growing process of my life being at Ryder. But at the same time, I mean, I don't, I don't want it to end, so I'm really trying to make use of these last couple months. And, you know, they say time flies when you're having fun. This season has flown by. You know, it's already less than two months until the tournament. And, you know, we're having a great time, and we're really hitting our stride right now. And that's why I'm glad we're ready to wrestle Edinburgh and just really end with a bang here. And just, like I said, uh, team-wise, just really get Angie, Angie his first EWL conference title. And, really just set him up for success because that's all he's ever done for us. That's all Bedleon's ever done for us is just give us the best opportunity and do as, as good as we possibly can with, you know, whatever, limited limited resources or, you know, we go to Iowa, Iowa State, and you see all these things that they have and great coaches that they were able to bring in. But we've always believed in ourselves to be able to wrestle with these guys, to wrestle now with Kilgore, just to have guys that are really pushing us in the room. doesn't matter what your room looks like. It's just that we're working our asses off and getting better every day in that room. Will your dad be driving some type of junkyard vehicle to the NCAA tournament this year? Have you seen the bus? Have you seen the bus, the flood bus? He got it from the flood? He's got a Mercedes bus. Did you know that? No one. Dri- yeah, he drives Camden Catholic around in it. I haven't been out of the loop, I guess, because I don't know. I don't think I know that He's got one. like a Mercedes bus. It's awesome. <laughs> um, 110% that- on that first question, though. Yeah, so he'll be driving a junkyard vehicle. How and- has that affected you guys? How, you know, you're, you guys are... Yeah, Russell like junkyard guys. You know, it's kitchen sink, but <laughs> has that really affected you? Like, you know, where you guys come from? Yeah. Camden Catholic. Um, and your dad, your dad owns a, he owns a salvage yard, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he does. Yep. Has that affected you guys and, like, kind of, like, influenced you? Yeah, definitely. Is that kind of how you guys are? Just yeah. really tough guys? Yeah, really. I mean, we, my dad does everything last minute. Um, I've had probably 30 different cars that I've driven since I started driving. I've had nice ones, I've had crappy ones, but it's just been a ride, you know? My, like, I always would say that my dad likes to make it fun. We drive to not even tournaments, but practice in different Jeeps or different RVs or something crazy. And I've always liked it just because it's like, my dad is just willing to get us there no matter what way it takes. He's gonna take as many kids as he can with him and he's gonna try to get as many kids as Whatever he can better as, at wrestling. Yeah. Whatever it takes. Whatever the hell it takes, seriously with that man. And you know, I like that it kinda of shines with my wrestling. It's just that I'm gonna go out there and fight for the whole seven minutes just because I think my dad, the coaches that he's gotten me to, you know, some of the if I could just show you some of the crazy coaches that I've been able to work with in my career, I mean, it would it would show you why Taylor and I, why my little brother wrestle crazy like that and we just you know, we're just going to fight for everything and just believe in our style, you know? And uh, I always like to tell people, it's like when I think I always look at my brother as just being a great role model for me because he showed me that the the crap that we use works. It works at every single level. People said when he was going into middle school, oh, that stuff's not going to work, and it worked. People said when he was going into high school, that stuff won't work, and it worked. He was, you know, got recruited to go to college, and it worked there too, and it's just, you know, I always thank him, and growing up a little bit, I just realized that who knows where I would have been if I couldn't see Taylor be able to wrestle and go to the national finals and just be able to pin all kinds of guys. Because I remember looking at the rankings in college and I screenshotted a picture of my, when my brother made it into the top 20. And I looked back on that one day and I was like, I was so proud of him for making the top 20 and look where he ended up and look where I ended up. So just to see you know, how that style has worked and how all my dad's hard work, my mom's hard work, the whole family just trying to get us ready and the coaches that I've had, I mean, 
this is just like a victory lap for me right now, just to be able to kind of enjoy it and just see that, you know, I can go into these matches calm and trust in my style and just believing in the stuff that we've worked on my entire life. Is your sister really the best athlete in your family? She, your dad I, I said think that. So. I was like, there's no way. <laughs> is she really the best athlete? I think I could give that to her, and I feel bad for her because she hasn't had a sport to really focus on, but the thing is, any sport that she jumps into, she's amazing at. So she really has that, that kind of style, and if she can find a sport where, where she can start applying a junkyard dog style to it, I know she's going to be phenomenal at it. All right. How old is she? Uh, she's a freshman in high school. Freshman. Is she yeah, going to Camden? Yep. Yep. All right. You got anything else for me? Nah, I just, I'm happy to be here, happy to be talking to you, and happy to support the Ryder Bronx. Yeah. Can't wait to see how far this team can go once I'm gone. EWLs, I'll be there. Thanks for the time. Good luck, man. Thank you, Zeb.